Hi, I'm Life Coach Landry, and the topic is ways to get over the fear of confrontation. I got an email here from somebody on uh, on YouTube. It says, uh, "Hey, Coach, I've been watching your channel for a while. I really like the content, but I haven't seen you cover anything about confrontation. For some reason, I get a lot of anxiety when it comes to talking about to my partner about things in our relationship. Even though I I kind of go over it in my head, I preview it, I even practice what I'm going to say." But when I get to the point where it's time to confront them, I just can't do it. I'm not really sure how to overcome this. That's a great question. Actually, I think a lot of people have confrontation issues. I'm I'm actually a very um, I'm very can be very confrontational if something needs to be nipped in the bud. And everybody should be that way to some extent because you don't want things to fester and linger and stew because they're far worse when they do that. And some people become passive aggressive when they're like that too. So. That's a great question. I'm actually glad you asked that. I've been wanting to cover the subject for a little while and I haven't had a reason to get around to it. And your email kind of kicked that in gear for me. So thanks for your uh, your question. So, you know, many problems go, I think, unaddressed in relationships because people are afraid to talk about them. I mean, that's, that's just the way it is, right? So if you're terrified of expressing, you know, your opinion uh, in kind of a direct manner, um, I'm going to give you some ways to kind of get over that and see if you can knock past it. Number one, I think the number one problem is um, that you probably need to do is you need to identify the problem with being a pushover. You know, why are you a pushover? What is it that's letting people just kind of knock you over when it comes to you having feelings about things and you're kind of like, man, I want to talk about it, but when I get to it, I just feel like someone just basically stiff arms me out of the way and I don't get around to it. You know, you won't change your behavior uh, unless you believe what you're doing um, now isn't working right and clearly if you're sending me this email what you're doing isn't working and I'm sure if you're watching this video what you're doing is not working so when you get nervous and afraid to speak up I think it's easy uh, to kind of convince yourself of staying quiet is the best option but it's not I want you to write down all the problems that you experience when you avoid confrontation perhaps you go home from work and you're feeling stressed out or maybe your relationship becomes more damaged every time you allow someone you know to hurt your feelings and you need to identify that. Okay, number two, I want you to list um, what you might gain by speaking up, right? It's important to say, hey, if I'm gonna speak up and I'm gonna make a confrontation which has the possibility of changing things in my relationship, what are the benefits of doing that? You know, why would speaking up do anything for me? And once you start to realize when you list those things what it will do for you, you'll feel a lot better about it. So uh, on the back of the piece of paper, uh, write down what you could achieve Um, Your relationship might improve, problems might get resolved, um, you might become happier, you know, shocker, you know, get specific about things you stand to gain. Every time you're tempted to stay quiet, read over your list, okay? Have that list to where you have it in one of your cloud documents, something, whenever you know you want to confrontate somebody. In confrontation, don't look at it as like a a war-like thing. Confrontation is simply, hey, can I have a conversation with you? Can we sit down at the table? That's all it is. Stop thinking about this, you know, you're standing face to face at each other and it's giving it that oomph to it to where it's really kind of seemed like it's a big deal, right? So number three, I want you to reconsider the assumptions that you've had about confrontation, which leads into what I just said. The fear of confrontation is often based on false assumptions to begin with with most people. Thinking confrontation is bad or telling someone I disagree with you might ruin my relationship, I'll, you know, that's going to fuel your fear of not you know, bringing up subjects to people in the first place, right? You're going to create anxiety in yourself if you think like that. If the person loves you and they want to be with you, they should look forward to resolving things so that they know you're not walking around with lingering things inside you and stewing things inside you. Men are bad about this sometimes because they don't like to communicate about certain things because they feel like they're either not knowledgeable about it or they completely disagree with you so they just shut down about it. Women are bad about it because women don't want to hurt the relationship because feminine energy is keeping a bridge of communication and they feel like if they're confrontational with you sometimes they might ruin that bridge so they avoid it and they become passive aggressive. So these are just things to note because in reality confrontation is healthy. It's resolution conflict, right? Think about it like that. There's many kinds of assertive ways to speak up and express your opinion, but just remember it'll improve your situation the more transparent you are with each other. Number four, I want you to address one small issue at a time. When a firefighter goes into a house, he does not try to put the entire house you know, out at one time. They start with a corner, they start with a room, and they slowly kill it because 
Otherwise, if you try to take on everything that's engulfed, by the time you get done, you've wasted double the amount of time trying to put it all out. And what that's done is everything's burnt. Think about it like that. So don't address. If you avoid speaking up to everyone around you, pick a safe person to confront first. Practice a little bit if it's that big of a deal for you. But maybe you want to start with a trusted friend, um, someone that you know isn't going to blow up at you. Um, address something minor or you know something regular. Don't you know? Don't go too fast. So try something small to chip out at. Number five, stick to. Um, I statements and work on staying calm. Okay, and what I mean by that is at the heart of good communication, good, healthy, strong communication is um, I statements rather than you statements. As soon as you start saying you a lot, you're going to start dividing your ability to get to them and be effective. And that's not what you want. The only way you're going to be effective on them is pissing them off. What you want to do is you want someone to want to communicate back with you, and people want to do that when they hear I. All right, when they hear you, that makes them say, let me go get my shield and my armor on before I finish this conversation. And I may not even want to finish it with you. Okay. I am concerned about the way you would, you know, you address a group of people that um, I feel disrespected when you arrive late. I feel something. You don't want to say, I, I'm always pissed off because you keep doing this. You want to say, I feel disrespected when people are late. It's, it's important to me. So can we talk about your punctuality? You know, see how I use the word you, but after I use the word I, you want to make sure it's they understand that you are the one that's feeling this way, you know, and not them. And you want them to feel that right away so that they feel the need to respond to help you with your own feelings rather than you saying, I only have these things because of you. Okay. Number six, keep practicing one small step at a time. Confronting someone is uh, more of an art than a science. And what works well in one circumstance does not guarantee it'll work in another, uh, especially with different people. Different people require different kinds of gloves in order to understand that. So know your audience well when you're talking to people. Friends versus family versus your relationship all require different kinds of conversation. And intimate feelings uh, can change the sensitivity of obviously what's going on, right? So I want you to consider your efforts, a work in progress, small steps, um, just like any fear, facing uh, your fear and confrontation will get easier over time if you practice it and you work with people that are, uh, you know, that are conducive to what you're trying to accomplish. The more you speak up for yourself, the less frightening it will become over time. Do you know? Never be afraid to say, um, you know, what I feel is important, and I think you should equally think it's important too. But once we talk about it, I'm not going to beat you up with it anymore. But I need information from you to to see if I can resolve my own feelings. Okay. So if you're working on these type of things and, and you have a fear of confronting people in the workplace, family, relationships, contact me on the email below and you can work with me personally. And if you just found this video of value for yourself, you can show your appreciation by clicking on the email link below and I will talk to you soon.